Hello everyone, we are live here on the webinar platform and also on our YouTube channel. Uh, for the ones that are watching us right now on YouTube, if you would like to ask questions mm -hmm. to us, uh, please register uh, to that webinar by the link that you see in the stream description. So today we talk about CRM and how to digitally transform your organization with CRM and also how to make implementation of CRM successful. Uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is Olena Grunyuk. I will be your host today. And my guest today is Miljana Nimcevich, CRM consultant and trainer. Hello, Miljana, and welcome. Hello. Hi, Olena. Yes, nice, nice to have you today. I am so, really happy to be here. Thank you. So before we start, let me mention very shortly um, some organizational information. So mm -hmm. we plan our webinar for the 45 minutes. Uh, we are recording this webinar. So right after uh, we finish, you will receive uh, a link to the video and, uh, and the presentations as well. And uh, we start from the presentations and uh, after, uh, after we finish, uh, we will have a Q&A session. So you're welcome to type your questions into the chat, even during uh, the presentation. So as soon as you have them and we will be answering them uh, in the end. So um, let's go to, to the topic at once. Uh, let me here, I would like to share with you uh, shortly what is the um, status quo here uh, in the C region with the CRM implementations. Uh, last year in autumn, uh, uh, we published our joint uh, study, which we did with ASECA Poland. And uh, you can download uh, also it, uh, the full study on our website. Uh, and we found out from that from from our survey that we did that two thirds uh, of uh, of the banks and financial organizations here in the CEO region uh, implemented uh, solutions that are meant to um, provide and support uh, customer experience. And 80% of these solutions are CRM solutions. So this uh, uh, give us the estimation that uh, around 50% of the banks and financial organizations uh, implemented uh, such solutions um, here in the region. Uh, it was loud uh, on this topic when here in the region, when banks started to announce uh, their digital strategies. Uh, in 2019 and uh, 2020 as well. Uh, and uh, several banks included, uh, and they announced it and published it uh, officially on their websites, that one of the uh, important uh, uh, pillars and, um, and topics and uh, ways uh, uh, of implementation uh, during the digital transformation will be implementation of a very sophisticated CRM. This is uh, an example of Alior in Bank in Poland. And in and, and general, uh, the, the trend was and the um, strategy was the following that mainly for their segments of private individuals and micros uh, solutions, which could help automate sales, automate uh, acquisition of new customers, automate uh, also do marketing automation, etc. cetera. Uh, so banks were focused on these uh, solutions and for the SME and corporate customers, um servicing model with uh, relationship managers remained in focus and here um, the the target that they, they were announcing was that they will deliver sophisticated crm solutions that their arms could really see a lot of insights on the customer and and tips uh, to contact uh, the customers if they see you know some triggers in the system uh, i'm bring here uh, uh, two examples uh, first one is Guarantee BBVA uh, uh, from Turkey. They launched two years ago uh, uh, a CRM which was called Smart Visits and Call. And the target was here to help RMs organize their calls and visits to their business customers more effectively. 
uh, uh, so they implemented this model and uh, uh, they succeeded and um, um, the target was actually to increase customer satisfaction which they measured, measured by the NPS score also to uh, increase number of uh, active customers so meaning activate existing existing customers as well and also uh, increase the improve the efficiency of RMs meaning that the time spent for the calls and the visits uh, were minimized and uh, uh, also a good example we had in Budapest Bank uh, three years ago they implemented their own uh, CRM solutions which they called sales telemetry also targeted uh, for the giving a sophisticated and uh, uh, um, three uh, 360 degrees tool for the relationship managers to see all the insights and all the um, cases that are happening to their customers uh, and uh, so it it is uh, uh, integrated with all the transaction banking system also uh, RMs can see uh, which calls had been done recently who called for example to the customer uh, who visited the customer what were the results uh, of, of such visits etc so target also was uh, uh, first of all uh, from their side is to become a number one bank for the SME customers acquisition and also to uh, improve satisfaction, which they also um, measured by the improved uh, uh, NPS score. So these are the, the examples that we see here in the C region. Uh, Miliana and Parsink, what to you here? So, so let's discuss how this should go uh, uh, with the strategy and how to help financial organization to implement such tools successfully. And then uh, let's have a discussion on that. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Elena. Really a great introduction for, for today's topic and the things that I want to, you know, talk today and share with you and our attendees. So um, really nice examples of uh, some CRM projects and initiatives uh, within these uh, companies that you mentioned. And um, I really want to talk to you about this uh, digital transformation wave that hit the, the, the world in the last couple of years and you know to talk uh, about this digital transformation wave in regards to the crm as one of the of the digital trends um, who are actually you know pushing this uh, wave high so let me just uh, say a little bit about uh, myself uh, as you already said i am a crm consultant and trainer um, uh, within the Omega Consulting team. It's an um, established uh, consulting company in Serbia. And uh, why am I the person, you know, to actually talk about digital transformation and CRM? Well, uh, not, <laughs> well, maybe 15 years ago, I digitally transformed uh, the one, one business here in Serbia. I was, um, you know, like some sort of a pioneer of e-commerce in Serbia and uh, digitally transformed the way that tires were sold. And that, that's my road uh, and how I ended up with, with this uh, digital transformation anyway. And um, uh, like uh, for the past 10 years, the CRM has been my favorite subject. And uh, I've been really following not only what is happening in the world, but also within the companies that uh, we were working with as a, as a consultants. I'm also a senior marketing executive within Aspire Technologies. This is a specialized system integrator, telecommunication integrator. And uh, I am also a certified consultant within the Center of Digital Transformation, which was you know, started like a couple of years ago uh, by the Serbian Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. And uh, of course, I'm, I'm working also as a business advisor within Innovation Fund, EBRD. So uh, for the past uh, six, seven, eight, ten years, uh, I really had a chance to, you know, see what is happening in the market and in different industries, different, different companies uh, when it comes to size and, you know, uh, and what the digital transformation actually is, you know and uh, uh, what are some uh, challenges and what are the benefits and uh, where the CRM as a digital trend is, you know, and what, what is happening there. So I think that, you know, we have a lot of interesting things to say. Uh, and as I said, you also gave a, a great introduction to, to this subject. And I would also like to share some numbers because, you know, the numbers don't lie. 
And uh, the thing is that uh, we are really on that peak of that, uh, we are in that peak of, of that digital transformation wave because when you now Google this term, you get like around 3.7 billion search results for, for this digital transformation topic. And uh, also you can see that the interest for the last 10 years when it comes to digital transformation was, you know, getting bigger and bigger. And uh, like 10 years ago, it was a non-existent term and now everybody's talking about it and, you know, how are we going to do it and what are we doing in terms of digital transformation? So it's a huge, huge wave. And I think that it's here to stay because of everything that is happening within technology and, you know, the world. Uh, so, uh, also some numbers regarding CRM, because I think uh, a great part uh, of that wave is actually the CRM, which actually is not so new. So we can, you can trace the, the CRM as a, as a topic and as a strategy, as a way to operate uh, like uh, to the last century, um, the early 70s. So it's been here for five decades, but uh, in the last couple of years, uh, the trend is uh, growing bigger and bigger, and you can see some some really amazing numbers. So last year, the CRM market value almost reached sixty billion dollars, and it is uh, there are some estimations that it will be even you know double uh, in size by next uh, five to six years, and it is uh, definitely the largest and the fastest growing software market uh, in the world. And uh, the the interesting fact is that actually this uh, CRM software market actually outpaced the database management system, which were number one for, for a very, very long period of time. And uh, also some interesting numbers, you have more than 4,000 CRM solutions. It's a really huge number. And, you know, you have them in all sizes and uh, available to all business types and all different sales channels and, you know, communication channels. They are getting really, really complex and robust. So you can you can have a CRM for $10 per month per license and you have like enterprise solutions, which cost like thousand, uh, $100,000 per year. So. Uh, definitely, what are the companies and industries are, are doing? They are sharing, they are increasing their share of investment in in customer facing apps. Uh, so there are several research from year to year which shows that you know the companies are investing more and more in CRM, self service, uh, communication centers. So, and your your examples actually prove prove that. But uh, uh, there is one statistics uh, uh, which is you know constant. Uh, from year to year also, and that statistic says that uh, almost every second uh, CRM project and initiative is uh, not successful so much or it's not returning uh, the investment and uh, not fulfilling the expectations that, you know, the, the company had. So uh, the, the, the trend is huge, it's uh, getting bigger and it will be bigger from year to year, but it seems that uh somehow we are not so good at doing it and implementing it that's that's why i want to talk about this subject because subject because i think it's really really important uh and i have some you know specific recommendations recommendations how to do it i'm also part of that uh, statistics failure statistic when it comes to crm because i when i was a, a ceo of a company uh which you know was did that e-commerce company uh, we also tried to implement the CRM and we didn't do it uh, in the proper way. So it was a failure. So <laughs> believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Uh, so um, uh, one other thing, and, and I think that's that's the most important question. Why, why the CRM, uh, why the numbers are so high and uh, why everybody is trying, you know, to do something with it and to invest something in, in this customer, customer facing initiatives, the customer relationship management projects. So in order to answer that question, because it, I think it's really important to understand why this is happening, uh, I want to share with you uh, this picture, which shows the progression of economic value and uh, what has happened over the decades and over the years and why we are so interested in, in customer relationship at this stage of, of uh, time and, and at, at present moment uh, and why it will be, uh, you know, a trend which will last for, for a while. Uh, because, you know, when we go back, uh, we know when, when 
the agrarian economy was um, uh, present. We were extracting and exchanging commodities. Then after the industrial revolution, there was the age of industrial economy. So we are producing goods and we are, you know, um, uh, competing on the quality of, of the goods, on price of the goods. And, you know, some, we, we, we still are in this age uh, dominantly, but, uh, you know, uh, after a while, because uh, uh, if the business wants to be competitive uh, and to, you know, uh, take a share of the market, uh, you have to provide some additional value. So we are definitely now also in a service economy uh, stage where we are focused on the delivery and of, um, we are focusing on uh, somehow adjusting our services uh, to the specific maybe customer segments and uh, specific customer market segments. So in order to you know, have a higher margin and uh, to keep our businesses profitable, we are now living in an experienced economy. And this is the next stage, uh, you know, when we, in order to to uh, have a, a decent profit margins, we have to offer something more uh, than a quality product and a good service. Uh, we have to also offer some outstanding experience to our customers. And um, uh, this uh, process of customization uh, is really something that is happening and will happen in the future. Uh, as a way, as a strategy for the businesses to, you know, differentiate from the competition and uh, uh, keep their their margins. So it's something that it's uh, it will not go away, and it is something that uh, that companies and industries and business owners and CEOs and everybody who wants, you know, to make make <laughs> some business uh, be aware of. And um, to have the answer, how are we going to to do that, and what what's the what's uh, our our way of doing it? So um, um, I think that uh, uh, what what happened in the market, and I think that uh, probably you are aware, uh, or, uh, this is a new type of strategy that uh, businesses are using in order to get the leadership position or to maintain the leadership position and um, it is uh, called customer intimacy so um, you know you can fight with the with the with the quality of your product and you can have a, a strategy based on product leadership like uh, brightling or apple you can also try to to uh, you know um, obtain some operational excellence and uh, try to minimize uh, all the waste and uh, the cost keep the cost optimize the cost of your business and you know try to to uh, compete with uh, with that kind of strategy but uh, due to everything that is happening and the technology development the customer intimacy uh, as a strategy uh, is gaining more and more followers and you know you you have businesses like amazon and booking and all other 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 companies uh, similar companies who are uh, you know actually employing this customer intimacy strategy and uh, they are using uh, this kind of strategy to to be the first and the best in the market so uh, what does it mean it means that uh, thanks to the industry 40 and we are living in this this time of industry 40 thanks to the cloud computing to the big data you know thanks to the big data you know can segment the market and your customers to such micro segments you can do the personalization you can uh, thanks to the machine learning and the artificial intelligence uh, not to mention the mobile applications you, you are now in the pocket of your customers you can be in the pocket of your customers uh, you are in a position as a business as a company to create a superior customer experience and to use that superior customer experience as a as a way not only to attract more more customers and you know to make them uh, and turn them into into loyal and satisfied uh, you know uh, customers and uh, some some sort of advocates or or ambassadors of your brand but you can also compete uh, with other other uh, competitors in the market and you know you can you can really make some some great great uh, results so uh, in order to again confirm this this trend and this situation that we are in and we will be in in, in, the, in the times that are in front of us. Uh, I will show you some, some other numbers. So 
there's a lot of it, it's a huge buzzword the customer experience and uh, again when you consult google you will get like 4.7 billion search results and you can see more or less the same graph like with digital transformation so in the next in the last 10 years the the interest for customer experience has has grown and it's huge so uh, i think it is it is really really uh, clear that uh, not only in the in the last years but in the years that are are coming uh, the customer centricity, the customer intimacy as a strategy will be here and more and more businesses and companies will try to, you know, um, compete on the market uh, by using this kind of strategy because uh, you can have a, a great product and you can have a, a, a great processes and operational excellence, but uh, it probably won't be enough in order for you to stay on the market, to lead on the market, you know, and to have a, a long term successful business and, and results. So uh, the question is, if the, the situation is, as, as, I, as I explained, and, and uh, uh, you know, we have to do something about it. Uh, and uh, so the question is not, should we digitally transform? or why should we do it? But the question is how to do it and how to do it properly and how to, how to be successful at it. Uh, because uh, I think the statistics um, um, that I already shared with you that every other CRM project is, is not successful. I think it's not only, um, you know, it, it doesn't apply only to CRM projects. I think that the, the digital transformation projects are more or less uh, with the same with the same results because uh, we are it, it is a new thing relatively new thing and and it really depends on the company's ability and capacity to to manage change to manage innovation uh, you know it's it's a question of do we have our transformation muscles as a company and uh, how quickly and how successfully can we implement any change so are we slow are we good uh, uh, how are we doing it so. I will try also to to give some you know to to throw some light on on that too because for any business to be competitive and long term successful you have to uh, have the ability to to manage innovation and to manage uh, change. So how to digitally transform? That's the question, and I would like to share with you this uh, digital transformation wheel, <laughs> and it has three parts. And the first part uh, is strategy. So we definitely, uh, as a business and as a company, we need to have a clear, defined, clearly defined mission and vision. And when I say mission and vision, I don't think uh, mission and vision statement. I'm thinking more of uh, uh, income sources. So what are the income sources now? What are the customers? What are the products or services? Uh, who is selling them on, on which territory, in which time of the year, etc. And uh, not only we should analyze this uh, like uh, looking back or at the present moment, but also we have to have a clear vision, you know, what are will be the, the income sources uh, of the future. And um, in order to, you know, to know how to establish our business goals and strategies uh, for achieving that goals. Uh, if we are moving in some uh, sort of uh, digital transformation way or we are thinking about implementing some digital technology, definitely we have to have a digital strategy, but it should be aligned with the, with the vision with, and the mission and the business goals. Uh, what is also important uh, when it comes to strategic, the, this part of digital, digital transformation will, the strategy, um, the, there has to be a really clear decision framework. So how do we make strategic decisions? Who is making them? Who is, who is involved in that decision making process and how fast are we and what are we basing our, our decision on? And uh, one other thing, uh, I mean, you have to understand that this digital transformation process as every transformation process, it's, it's a never ending process. So, um, uh, in order to be successful, you have to, uh, you know, uh, give up the big changes of the big project. You have to start 
uh, betting on small continuous uh, changes and like discrete solutions, but you should be doing them often and, uh, you know, which you should be doing them all the time. So this is on the strategy part. Once you got that figure out, you can start working on your culture. So what does it mean? It means that uh, in order to successfully digitally transform, whatever the trend you are applying, so is it CRM or something else, maybe document management system, or maybe some new ERP or uh, business intelligence or, or whatever, uh, your, you, you as a company, your, the company has to have an adaptive, adaptive uh, company culture. So the culture which embraces change, which uh, is collaborative. So no silos is, uh, you have to be able to cross, uh, to, to form cross-functional teams which are working on, you know, these discrete solutions <laughs> that, that we mentioned within the strategy part. So uh, you need uh, absolutely executive buy-in, but not only executive buy-in, but also all the, the levels, the hierarchy levels. So middle management, bottom employees, they all have to share the same, the same values, values and, you know, to be the bearers of that company culture. So um, the, the company has to be risk friendly, so not afraid to make mistakes and to try some, some things which probably would fail. So not every initiative will be successful. And uh, what does it mean also? It means that uh, the culture has to be focused on continuous improvement and continuous measure. Uh, so uh, this is the type of culture you need to build in order to be successful at any kind of transformation and especially digital transformation. And the third part of this digital transformation will, after you have solved your strategy, you have sorted out the culture, is the technology part. And the technology part, I think it's not really a problem. You have a lot of, a lot of uh, at the table at the moment. So uh, maybe the, 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 the greater problem is how to choose and what to do first and uh, how to implement it, how to do the integration. But you have really, really so many choices. And I, I, I told you already, so there are like 4,000 CRM solutions. So, so it's not the problem to, you know, what will I, the problem is how to choose the correct one, which will, you know, serve you uh, not only in the first six months or one, two years, but, you know, some long-term solution. So basically uh, this digital transformation will never stop. So once you do the strategy, you align your culture, you implement some, implement some technology, you do it all over again, because by implementing something new, you learn something new. So it's probably will be affecting your, your strategy uh, in some way. So uh, how to successfully digitally transform with CRM? This is something that I, I would like to put the focus and give you some specific recommendations because uh, if you want to compete on the market by you know, applying this uh, customer intimacy strategy, if you want to become a customer centric company, if that's the way um, to uh, compete on the market, to beat the, you know, the competition or maybe uh, solve some stagnation in your business or whatever is the case, uh, you have to take three steps. And now I will share, you know, the, the specific recommendations how to do it. So, of course, I, I, I bet that you won't be surprised, but the first Thing and the first step would be to work on your strategy. So uh, whether you, you think you have it or, or not, you actually have some existing CRM strategy. Uh, but uh, in order to work on some kind of new or redesign uh, and, or design a new, new CRM strategy, you have to first educate uh, as many employees as you can on the subject because uh, it is really uh, a term and a concept which uh, uh, there are so misunderstandings uh, regarding CRM. And when I talk about education, actually, I'm talking about the five key processes, which are the, 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 main, the main elements or components of, of CRM as a, as a strategy. Um, after education, of course, you should analyze your existing CRM strategy. And there is uh, something that is called a CRM strategic matrix, which you can use to analyze it. So what at a moment we are doing and how good are we at, at you know, doing it? 
Uh, after that, definitely you should form a cross-functional team and you should include uh, somebody from top management and from the middle management uh, within marketing and sales because you need these all of these employees and all of these um, people in order to work on your new CRM strategy. Uh, the first and maybe the core process within this uh, CRM strategy and CRM uh, process is uh, uh, the, the client. So who is, who is our buyer? Or uh, the first thing that you should do, it's the client strategy. So you should create your main buyer personas. So buyer personas, uh, they are like a, a ideal profile of your customers. And uh, uh, you should uh, spend some time in investigating from your, um, you know, all the data sources you have and everything you can, you can use uh, some collective knowledge that you have within, within your employ employees as a company to create that uh, buyer personas. They are representations of your, of your clients. So no matter, you can have like, a, I don't know, 20,000 maybe customers or even more, or maybe less, but uh, you should, you know, come to, to those uh, several or couple or 10 or whatever the number is, uh, uh, main buyer personas who are actually your clients. Uh, after you created them, uh, you are ready to create the customer journey for each of them. So the customer journey actually is, uh, this is the part when, when we start really to think about the customer experience. So uh, how does it look from the point of our customers, the things that we are doing with them? And uh, usually companies understood and realized that uh, maybe they are focused only on, on one part of the customer journey, but there are parts of customer journey, some touch points, some things that customers are uh, doing without them. And, you know, the company should be there present, the, the business should be present. So it is very important to do that customer journey and to see is it a positive, a negative experience, what we can do, what we can change, and what are the critical touch points so within that customer journey. Uh, when we uh, become aware of the important touch points within that customer journey, we should spend some time, that team, that cross-functional team should spend some time to map the content. So what is happening in that touch point? So what are the values? that we are giving to the customers and what are the values that we are expecting in return? Is it a, a fair exchange of values? So is there something that we can do better so, uh, so that uh, we improve the, the customer experience so you know, he would be satisfied enough to continue the journey with us as a, as a choice? Um, this, uh, all these uh, tasks, so the buyer personas, customer journey, mapping of the content for some of the important touch points. Uh, sometimes what, what can happen and what the company can realize is that there is a need to realign the organizational structure um, within the marketing and sales. Uh, what can happen is that you realize that you're missing some important organizational functions. Let's say maybe you should work on your market intelligence as a function within marketing or maybe uh, you need uh, uh, more digital presence, or you need to, to look at your organizational structure and see uh, if there is maybe, there are maybe some parts which need to be changed in order to support that CRM strategy that you, are, you have you know, created. And after or during that, that project, that uh, creation uh, process of, of this CRM strategy, you definitely should promote internally uh, everything that you are doing because it is very important, uh, not only to education, but also to promotion of everything that you created. Um, it is very important you know, to have uh, not only the buy-in from, from the people who are in the cross functional team, but also from, from all employees. So through some presentations or maybe additional educations, documents, whatever you can do uh, in order to promote that, that new CRM strategy. So uh, this would be the first, the first part. So this would be like the, like the first uh, work on the strategy. Once you have that, uh, you can start working on your culture. So how do you work on your culture? <laughs> 
So basically, you are doing more or less the same, but uh, uh, somebody else is doing it. So uh, you can choose one part of your operations or of your company, of your business to serve as a pilot project. So uh, let's say you, uh, you can take some part of the market, like smaller part of the market, and then include the people who are responsible for that part of the market and form a cross-functional team from them. So what you're doing, actually, you are uh, taking maybe somebody from the previous phase and uh, forming a new team uh, from maybe middle management uh, and the bottom employees in, in marketing and sales. So it's like uh, you have a seed, you created some seed in the, in the previous phase, and now you are sowing that seeds and you're trying, you know, to, to have uh, uh, more people involved in, in doing uh, 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 some work uh, uh, based on what you have done in the first phase. And uh, the main task of this uh, new, new uh, cross-functional team and this pilot project is actually you try to uh, create a development strategy for, for that pilot, for that uh, you know, part of, of the company or part of operations based on the CRM strategy that you have developed in the pre previous phase. So how do you do that? So what do you do? So you first uh, organize some sort of research, some surveys or whatever you, you have at your disposal, uh, you research who this uh, part of the company have in the market. So who is present there? Who 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 is uh, who are the customers, potential or existing ones? So after you finished your research, you can actually choose the segments uh, with untapped potential. So you will become aware that there are some customer segments and some buyer personas. Um, who are present there, but you are not working with them um, uh, on a satisfactory level. So there is untapped potential you can try to somehow use. Uh, after you choose those segments, those, those buyer personas, you should explore their attitudes and their opinions. It is very important uh, to do that because, um, you know, when you are working in a certain way, you have uh, some, some sort of view and some some opinions on your customers who they are what is important to them what are their values etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, once you you focused on on some segments you want to work more with you should explore and somehow ask for their attitudes and opinions on on the things that are in connection with your business and your products and your services uh, these findings from, from this uh, uh, exploration is used to, to create uh, the buyer personas in the customer journey uh, in a more specific and in more quality way. Because uh, what usually happens when you lower uh, down this work to some pilot project or to some you know, part of the company, uh, some specific uh, char characteristics of that market and, and of that uh, uh, buyer personas and on, uh, market segments appear. So it is very, very important, you know, to, to extract as many findings and insights you can in order to refine the buyer personas and, and the customer journeys that you will make. Uh, after you finish with the, with the customer journey, uh, then you can, you know, set some sales and marketing goals. So, okay, we know who we have in the market. We have choose some some target groups, some buyer personas we want, you know, to to grow. And uh, now we should establish some some goals. So, what do we want to do with them? Do we want them to have a, a larger number, you know, to to have a greater acquisition, or we want uh, to work on I don't know some kind of a adjustment of our of our products and services so we have uh, a bigger sales result? Whatever the the the, the goals, uh, you should set them. And uh, once you have the goals, you should create a sales and marketing operational plan. So what touch points from the customer journey, what activities we are going to perform in which, which period of time and who will be doing it? Will it, I don't know, maybe marketing or it would be sales or we need some external services, whatever, in order to, to achieve that, that goals and, you know, to perform that plan. Uh, so once we have the goals, we have the operational plan, execute the plan, and of course, measure the outcomes because, um, it is really important 
when we are start trying something new, uh, we should measure and see what are the results. So are we are we achieving what we aim to, or we need you know to try something else in order to to have the result. So this is the part how you work on the culture. So you created something uh, uh, in the first phase while you worked on the strategy, but now it's it's think of that like. Uh, you know, you have a, you, you created something new, but now you are creating it again with some, of course, changes because uh, uh, it's not uh, the, the, the part of the company is different. The people who are doing it are different. The customers are different. So you are you are refining and you are creating some sort of activity plan. So what are you going to do and how are you going to implement that CRM strategy and, uh, you know, get some results and achieve some goals? uh you 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 know established so this is the part of the culture where um and if it's possible do it not only with one part of the company but uh, you know make several pilot projects and include as much people as you can because this is if you want to transform and to innovate so uh the the, the large number of your employees should you know go to that transformation go through that transformation and and uh, start to think in a different way and see the things in the new way and then uh, once they have that findings they can act in a different way and understand why there are some initiatives and why we are doing things in a in a different manner and they will they will be the ones who all also participate in in deciding what are you know what are the goals and what are the buyer personas and what are we going to do in order to achieve some some results so this is the part it is very very important part and i will uh, explain uh, when i finish the, the third part why some of the of the project digital transformation projects and crm projects are unsuccessful because i think that's that's the one thing that i would like you to remember uh the third part is of course once we set up the strategy we we in, influence our, our culture we change our culture we can work on the technology and uh, i will share some practices regarding this phase also uh, because uh, uh, it is important to realize that uh, uh, no matter how many software vendors uh, there are <laughs> um, uh, you should always uh, you know, take into consideration what do you want to achieve with some tool and to try to, you know, keep that in mind during the whole whole work on technology and the implementation process. So, again, you need a, a cross-functional team, uh, which consists uh, from top and middle management in marketing, sales and some IT, uh, if you have it in your company and, of course, large companies do. So what you should do, uh, this cross-functional team should uh, define some criteria for selection and based on the previous phases uh, and select a CRM vendor or CRM solution, which is, you know, uh, satisfactory to, to the, the to need, not only to the needs, but also uh, to the cost uh, that will present uh, once the implementation starts and, you know, you implement the, the CRM. So definitely before the, the project start, uh, I, suggest, I, I advise uh, and suggest uh, not only to prepare for the project and to organize the project, but also uh, promote it. Uh, again, it is very important uh, to promote it internally. That is something that, uh, you know, we as a company will be working on and explain how this process is going to look like and how long it is going to last. Uh, I just want to point that in this phase, usually some sort of uh, integration is needed. So, uh, and you should uh, be careful not to mix the, those two. So integration is, you know, the, in the simplest way, connecting the databases from your uh, ERP or whatever core software you have and uh, uh, with, with this uh, new, new software tool that you will be using. So uh, sometimes this integration phase can prolong. Uh, it, it can, you know, last for some time. So and and the whole project um, uh, can be postponed due to that. And it is very important uh, to uh, really set your expectations, not only uh, expectations of this team who is leading the the work on implementation, but also of, of whole employees who are. Uh, you know, waiting for that to happen and uh, to start using this new tool. So 
this is very important. And uh, another thing that is very important is uh, that uh, this cross-functional team creates the CRM business specification for the first phase of implementation. So usually what, what happens when you are implementing some tool, um, the, 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 the software vendor you know, will try to push and implement all the functionalities that are there. And uh, you know you can end up with really robust and and uh, and uh, complicated and complex solutions. And I think in the CRM statistics, which I follow for quite a while, one of the of the things that is is usually there is that uh, uh, people are complaining uh, different level. <laughs> Employees are complaining that you know they have. Uh, too much uh, uh, functionalities in the CRM, but they are not using them, or they are, you know, in some way uh, misleading them, or they are too confusing and, and complicated. So, it is very important that the, this cross-functional team is really the owner of this CRM business specification, and that uh, you know that should be the project scope, and uh, not you should not allow the, the the software vendor to lead you some other way on or try to push for something more. So from my perspective and my, my uh, expertise and, and practice, this is really, really important. So uh, be prepared for you know, phase implementation and make sure to know what is the phase one because you want to implement it uh, really uh, good and you want to, to be sure that everything is working correctly. And this is the basis for the user ad adoption. So, um, it, if it, if it, uh, you know, it's better that the project is small and it's uh, only maybe uh, the first phase is only for the marketing or maybe we will just, uh, you know, uh, implement uh, uh, only some daily activities or, but, but to do it correctly and to have excellent user adoption and then think what would be the next phase, then to try and impl implement everything, uh, you know, to implement the whole solution on all functionalities uh, in, in one project. So after you have you have your CRM business specification in the software vendor, you know, accepted, <laughs> accepted that project scope and you agreed on that, uh, you can, you know, test the first version. Uh, I advise that it would be a small test only for the cross-functional team, so don't Although the first version should be really like 80% of the of the final version, it's good to keep it, you know, uh, within that cross-functional team because you don't you don't want to to somehow disappoint or or maybe you know set some inappropriate expectations uh, to the users who will be using the the solution later when it's implemented. And after you have that that first uh, conference room pilot test uh, done and uh, the software is revised based on that testing, you can then do the user acceptance, testings, uh, the user acceptance testing. And uh, my advice is to use this uh, user acceptance testing as uh, a chance to also educate and train the employees in the, new, in the new solution. So don't do it before, don't do it later, do it in the testing phase and definitely try to get uh, the employees uh, really involved uh, and uh, you know trained and um, actually if you want you can really do the the, the physical signing off uh, so that everybody who should use the the tool really sign that they are satisfied with the tool and everything that they you know uh, saw there and all the functionalities that are present after that uh, after successful testing prepare for launching you know, prepare backup scenarios and everything you can. So don't be don't be surprised if anything goes wrong. And once you go live, a uh, suggestion is that uh, not only that day, that week, uh, but, uh, you know, I suggest you have a hyper care uh, for the full month uh, so that again, uh, you really, really uh, help all the, the new users uh, in you know, using the new tool and uh, sorting out all the bugs and all the misunderstandings and, you know, make sure that after one month you, you really left uh, no space for, for any kind of reason not to use what you have implemented. And definitely once you do that, after some time, you should evaluate the finished project because, as I said, uh, the CRM implementation this is a, a phase implementation, so you should definitely evaluate the, the first phase and 
how do how did we do it? so uh, was everything okay uh, what could be done better because uh, within some time uh, you will probably want to to have uh, implemented the second phase so it would be good to evaluate the project that you just you just finished so what what happens next uh, well one two three on repeat so once you build something once you implement something and start using it really using it and measuring the results you probably will have some new insights you will learn something new and that will probably affect your strategy maybe some business goals and uh, you know give yourself some time as a company to realize what would be the next thing that we would implement so uh, don't rush and you know take some time in order to to understand what what uh, what is the new phase and what you want to implement so uh, and this is a continuous process so it's a never ending process uh, for any kind of transformation and digital transformation and of course uh, it is also something that applies to implementation of a CRM software. Uh, so, uh, Olena, should I, I, I guess you were following if there are some some questions? Maybe. Uh, so this is this is everything I wanted to share. I, I uh, also promise that I will share the reasons why some the projects, digital transformation projects, are unsuccessful. What it takes to be successful, but maybe we can do it uh, within the q a session yes thank you thank you very much Miliana, for such a detailed presentation uh i do encourage our attendees to ask questions to tap them into the chat we can have um, now additional minutes and additional time for 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 the q a session well i do have uh, uh yeah. some questions uh Miliana, to you so first of all uh, uh my first question how long from your um, experience with, with the financial organization, how long is the process of CRM implementation if you take into account and into consideration all the steps that you mentioned, uh, work on strategy, on culture and on technology? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's an excellent question because uh, usually in the market, the CRM software vendors, you know, they are full of promises like that we will, you know, implement the CRM in three months, six months, and, you know, they're competing on the short, <laughs> the short period of implementation. I think it's really a wrong approach because if you really want to do it properly uh, and the company, you know, is like a middle size, not to mention enterprise companies. So the, the work on the strategy, it usually takes one year at least because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, it's a short term for a company, to be honest. Uh, the culture, the culture work, the work on the culture, it also takes around one year because, uh, especially if you want to have multiple, multiple file, pilot projects, and my advice is to have several, not only one, and to, to you know, try to involve as many people, as many employees as you can. So it's usually another year, and then you are really ready and and eager to implement a tool. So the tool usually comes, uh, you know, in the in the third year. And uh, to be honest, the first phase of, of the tool implementation, uh, it's only the first phase. So in order to, it's, it's the, moderate, the moderate version of CRM, to be honest. If you really want to fully implement the CRM strategy, uh, so uh, it usually takes uh, from three to five years to really, really harness the, 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 the effects and the results. Uh, of that investment in both in strategy and culture and in, and, in, and in tools. So this is the proper time frame to do it really if you want to push in this direction and have the customer intimacy as your strategy and to really have uh, results by doing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we have a question from, from Liliana. What is going to be an optimal period for, for CRM introduction in one organization. Yes, I think we, we actually yes, had the same question. We answered it. Yes, thank you, Liliana. Um, okay, I would like to come back maybe to the uh, uh, estimation that I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that around 50% of the financial organizations here in the region implemented CRM. And I would like to discuss a bit this number because for me this is um, means you know that only 50% of the bank care about customer experience and have or plan 
to have a customer centric strategy and you know what can be more important than customers yes uh, so um you know and, and still the part of organizations still use kind of excel you know to to manage customer relationships so my question is what is your feeling uh, 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 on the market because you work in this uh, area you know every day and also what are the main challenges that you see uh, that are stopping banks to from from the implementation Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it really depends from the company to the company, but uh, mm -hmm. what what can I, uh, based on my experience and, you know, working as a consultant, what, what I can share with you is that uh, it really comes to the, to the ability of the company to management uh, change or innovation. So are we as a company, you know, do we have the ability to, to change and to innovate? And uh, are we organized in a way that that we can, you know, perform some some innovation and you know do it correctly? So, um, because you know, uh, when you think of the companies and and especially corporation, you know, when you're a small company, you're like a light boat, and when you want to take a turn, you know, you can do it like this. <laughs> but uh, but when you have a big war battleship and you know you need to make a turn it really takes a, a, a lot of time a lot of preparation so if there is nothing in the market that is pushing the company in this uh, direction you know we need to change and to do something new if there are no some some negative consequences of the of the strategies that we are using uh, so th there's really no pressure uh, for us to change so we are not doing it and the, this is one of the reasons but if the second reason is, is that uh, uh, we are not maybe good at doing it so so maybe we tried something maybe we failed uh, maybe you know so it's it's we, we are stuck somewhere in the middle uh so uh, usually the, these are the the, the two the two uh, the two reasons but i think the first one is maybe more more mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the, 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 the strategy and I think maybe the culture of the organization in general. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, maybe uh, we can come back and um, this will be then the, the, the last question. Mm -hmm. to, uh, today, if we can back to your presentation and these uh, three steps uh, um, of uh, successful implementation of the CRM, right? Work on strategy, cultural and technology. Could you give, uh, you know, a, a quick, maybe practical tips or recommendations how to be successful on each of these steps? <laughs> so, uh, first, I think it's, it's important to be prepared to invest some time and some energy and some resources. So, um, as is for anything you want to grow. So uh, it takes time, it takes uh, dedication, it takes commitment, it, it takes, you know, people who are willing to do it and to really uh, get involved. So, uh, and because, you know, it can't, it can't come from the, from the top only. So you have to have people who are, who are really um, committed to, to, to change something and, you know, to invest their time, energy and everything they have to bring it on the table and try to make some change. So it is very important to identify those people and, uh, you know, to, to form that team and to, to follow these steps uh, that, are, that I already, already uh, you know, present. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, this is uh, when, it, when it comes to the strategy. And uh, I think the strategy is not such a problem if you can return the slide to the to the uh, with, with this digital transformation wheel i think it's it's really the one, one, the one okay so the strategy part maybe it's not such a problem because you know we can set our mission vision goals and everything uh but what happens is uh you know how you spread through the company that that uh, culture towards change and toward you know because we are used to doing things the way we are doing it so how do you change the status quo? I think it's it's more important. And uh, what usually happens in in the market, and what we usually you know uh, when we work as a consultants uh, see, is that we have strategy, we implement technology, but there's no true adoption, because you know the people didn't change and they are not using whatever we implemented. So this is this is the usual case scenario, and. Uh, uh, 
uh, other case scenario in the more in some of the uh, industries we can have this innovative culture so we want to do this we want to do that we want to try new things we implement everything but we don't have a clear mission and vision and so no clear direction so why are we doing it so the company and the people you know get tired of trying this and that and you know it's 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 useless so uh, in order to be really successful uh, you have to do uh, this uh, in this order so first strategy then include as many people as you can they have to own this this uh, these projects and these changes they have to be involved they have to try they have to make mistakes you know and these first steps are always very very fragile and you know because it's something new and we didn't do it in that way and what happens if we do it wrong and so it takes patience it takes time but it really pays off in the long time long long run so after you make those first steps you know then then after then that that culture change and that pilot projects then do the implementation of technology and then you have you know much much better odds to do it successfully and you know in, and you learn to do it so as a company you can do it again no matter what the tool is or is it the next stage next phase and within time uh, as you do it you know more you will be faster and and you know there will there will be so much mistakes and you know maybe wanderings so that that is the the my advice i hope i, I answered your question yes, yes thank you very much miliana we will be finishing now our webinar thank you very much for your contribution uh, thank you also all the attendees uh, for being with us uh, uh, and staying to the very end. And uh, please join us uh, during our next webinars. We do them every week on different uh, banking topics. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also LinkedIn page to stay tuned. So thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye.